Thank you, Pastor. Somebody praise the Lord. Your daddy said, Praise the Lord. Here at the Alpha location, online, everywhere, anywhere you are on the globe, in the world, you will praise the Lord. Your life will praise the Lord. Your achievement will praise the Lord. Wherever you are now, on the ladder, going up, you are going to move higher. You are going to do greater things. The power of the Lord will arrest your life today. You will go where you have never gone. You will do what you have never done. You will achieve what you have never achieved. Today, the beginning of the rest of your life, and you are not going down, you are going. You are not going down, you are going. You are not going back, you are going forward. Raise up that hand. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you and bless your name. Your greatness will reflect on everyone. Your goodness will reflect on everyone. Your power will reflect on everyone here today in Jesus' name. Lord, take the mind of the rat away from everyone. And give us the mind, the vision, the strength, the passion of an eagle. For everyone young and old, everyone female or male, everyone African or American, connected with us today, that spirit of the eagle, that strength of the eagle, that specialty of the eagle, give to everyone in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We're coming to this time a youth impact convocation together. I'm looking at Matthew chapter 1. And in Matthew chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. In verse 22, it says, Now all this was done, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, look at verse 23, in verse 23, Behold, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name, tell me, Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. I want you to hold that word there, Emmanuel. Let's come to Psalm 103. And I'm reading there from verse 1, Psalm 103, verse 1. Bless the Lord, O my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Verse 2. In verse 2, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Verse 3. Who he who forgiveth thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Verse 4. In verse 4, it says, Who redeemeth thy life from destruction who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies verse 5 in verse 5 who satisfies thy mouth 
with good things so that the youth, my youth, my youth is renewed like the eagles. Hold on to that word there, eagle, eagle, eagle. In Matthew, Emmanuel. In the Psalms that I've read to you here, eagle, we're talking about Emmanuel and the eagle. We're talking about gracious Emmanuel for soaring heavenward eagles. Those two words, Emmanuel and the eagle, there's a connection by creation. Emmanuel, God with us, and the eagle, there is a connection by creation. There is a connection by conversion. By conversion. The conversion of the eagle by this Emmanuel, God with us. There's a connection by consecration. That the eagle understands I'm not here by myself. Emmanuel knows about my existence and my living here on earth. And that connection continues by consecration. There is a connection between Emmanuel and the eagle by cooperation. Cooperation that now... Emmanuel knows all about me and Emmanuel has hands in my life and he creates me to be an eagle he has converted me to be an eagle and I consecrate my life to him that I'll not be a rat I'll not be a reptile I'll not be a bat be a chi I will be an eagle there is that cooperation and then uh, the connection between the manual and the eagle there is a coronation a coronation that God himself coronates you that you will reign in life you will reign over everything the world might throw at you creation conversion consecration cooperation coronation you're starting a new journey today and you will soar like the eagle soar is special that you look at yourself there are other animals, mammals, reptiles, and you say, Raj, uh -uh, I'm not like that. And then the reptile crawling, I'm not like that. The worm, I'm not like that. And I see the king of the birds in the sky. And I say, that is my emblem. You're going to be an eagle. But you know, that eagle, you can see separation. You can see specialty, significance. You can see that this eagle makes himself the way God has made him special. You know, when you go through life and you understand your connection with Emmanuel, you're giving yourself to Emmanuel, and Emmanuel giving himself unto you special. Oh, in the word sore, optimistic, optimistic. You know, the, when the eagle sees the rat on the ground, and the rat can barely jump, he says, I am optimistic. What he cannot do, I can do. What they cannot do, the eagle sees the reptile always crawling, crawling, crawling. And yet, that reptile cannot move up. He says, I'm different from that. I'm special. I am optimistic. What they cannot do, I can do. Anybody there? What they cannot do, what they will not do, what their nature will not allow them to do, I can do. It's that optimism, not looking down, 
not looking back not regretting life but knowing i am optimistic a advancing advancing you know uh, the ego does not just fly at this level there's no ceiling upon the life of that ego always advancing i'll see you today when i see you next year if jesus starts if jesus starts you will still be alive yeah. that eagle must not die until i see him in the sky i'm talking about the eagle i see here today in front of me this eagle will not die until i see you in the sky yeah. always advancing always advancing i'm talking about myself always advancing i'm talking about my boy my girl i'm talking about my brother my sister there always advancing in jesus name uh, you know that is the eagle and the eagle are always renewed renewed the tiredness of yesterday is gone and the eagle gets up today and it's like the strength is renewed the nature is renewed and revived your special ego optimistic soaring and you are advancing and you are renewed they con let's watch the connection between the eagle and Emmanuel, that's what the connection brings to your life. I'm talking to you today on gracious Emmanuel for soaring heavenward eagles. And we're dividing the message of three parts. Number one, personal return to the Lord, the gracious Emmanuel. Personal return. You look at your life, you see. 15 years have gone and if I don't speed up if I continue at this speed where will I be I'm not it's like I'm not moving on like a soaring eagle I'm like a slowing down snail you know you go there you go after you've done many things and then you come back the snail is still there you will not be a snail anymore. It wants to make you real eagle in your heart, in your mind, in your life, in your aspiration. Everything that you do, you want to have the consciousness that this is an eagle here, not a snail. And because of that, you have this personal return to the gracious Emmanuel. Number two, present renewal of life through the great Emmanuel. Great Emmanuel. When you are connected with the great, greatness will come in your life. Amen. <laughs> when great Emmanuel, God with us, that left heaven and came to earth and it connects with you intimately that every day every time you have a strength flowing into you there will be personal in your world give me a good good amen, amen. give me an headquarters amen, amen. you know there are people that get so tired you know what I did yesterday, the work I did yesterday, you know, oh, I'm preparing for exam and my preparation for yesterday sapped me and fatigue has come and I wake up today and I wonder how am I going to live today? You're renewed every day and I want to tell you that from today, every day bringing a new challenge, every day bringing a new focus, every day bringing a new vision, the strength that will match your day, God will give to you every day in Jesus' name. Present, present, present renewal of life through the great Emmanuel. Number three is progressive resilience. 
progressive resilience. Uh, that's what resilience, uh, if I say it in a practical way, you're moving up and the wind is blowing against you. And the storm is blowing against you. And say, storm, I'm going to the top. The storm will not stop you. The wind will not stop you. And something on the inside bringing discouragement inside, outside, nothing will stop you in Jesus' name. And you're progressing because you are resilient. You're moving on because you are resilient. Progressive resilience under the leadership of our guiding Emmanuel. He will guide you to the top of your aspiration. He will guide you to the top of your spiritual life. He will guide you to the top of your profession. He will guide you and to the top of your calling, the calling of God upon your life. He will guide you in Jesus' name. Progressive resilience, whatever comes, whatever goes, whatever happens, whatever does not happen, whatever pressure, whatever privilege, you'll keep on making progress. Okay, let me say it for myself. I will keep on making progress. Give now a good amen to confirm it in your life. Progressive resilience under the leadership of a guiding Emmanuel. We're looking at number one now. Number one, we're looking at personal return. To the Lord, the gracious Emmanuel. He is gracious. He'll be gracious to you. He'll be gracious to me. He'll be gracious to us all in Jesus' name. The gracious Emmanuel. What does he do? Look at Exodus chapter 19. I'm reading from verse 4. Ye have seen, you will see what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles wings and brought you unto myself I brought you unto myself soaring eagle what do I see separation the Lord separated those Israelites from Egypt. It's always a separation. The separation of the achiever from the non-achiever. The separation of the saved from the sinner. The separation of the downtrodden from the upward looking people. The separation of go-getters from the people that are just so, 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 so alive. Separation in your life in Jesus' name. I brought you unto myself and the Lord will bring you to himself today in Jesus' name. But you know, they are to take a step by themselves. They are to return unto the Lord. When the Lord called them, and the Lord said, I want you to be mine always. And I put the blood, the mark of the blood there. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And he told them what to do. They will kill the lamb. They will apply the blood on the lintels of their house and the angel of death will pass all that night and when he sees the blood he will pass over them the Lord has done the same thing for us he's giving us a savior it's giving us Jesus he died on the cross of Calvary and when you believe in that blood of the lamb that cleanses us that forgives us that turns our lives around it takes you away from the darkness of Egypt and it brings you to the light of the gospel separation if you are going to soar you must first of all be separated there's no point you are the associates of the rats and the, you keep company with the reptiles 
and you remain in the dungeon of uh, you know the dogs that are you know picking those dirty things and of the swine and then you want to sort no pigs don't sort soar dogs don't soar the birds don't soar they are for the day and for the night you cannot even tell where they stand but the one who returns to the lord and there is separation separation oh observant you see the eagle the eagle is observant looks at that i can only see a valley there looks at that i can only see a peach there and it looks up observant you must be observant in your life christ has called you and he calls you for a purpose and the distractions of life will come are you observant are you observant that this is the way to the peak of the mountain this is the way to the peak of your profession this is the way to the peak of christian profession you must be observant you see it is that that makes us the people we ought to be because we are separate as the eagle because we are observant like the eagle and because we are acting a acting i've not found an eagle that will not be active lazy indolent retarded and cannot even move sleep each sleep sleep each sleep no a soaring eagle s is separate o is observant a is active you'll be active and you know the levels of activity you can be active by your own human strength you can be active by the strength of the Savior. You can be active by the sustaining power of the Spirit. And when you allow yourself to be so connected with Emmanuel that you are converted, you are consecrated, you are saved, you are sanctified and all the dead weight you understand what they call the force of gravity i'm sure you know you see the people that do not have the lifting power of the savior of the spirit in them there's always that world power gravity that is pulling them down every time but when you have given yourself to the lord and you will do that if you have not done that yet you'll do that today i said you'll do that today you'll become a soaring eagle you become active all that thing that makes you idle indolent not doing anything and the brain cannot think of anything higher higher than where we were yesterday higher than what we did yesterday that brain the lord will renew your brain it will make the renewal so practical everybody will see all around you amen and amen and then are responsive are responsive you know a little stirring by the mother eagle and all those young eaglets they will respond immediately you know it, it, it makes us different makes us separate makes us special and that comes in your life today ye have seen what i did unto the egyptians and how i bear you on eagles wings and brought you unto myself unto my grace unto my goodness unto my nature unto my power look at verse 5 in verse 5 it says now therefore if you will obey my voice indeed eagles 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 when the call comes to come up they obey 
when the call comes to look up they obey when the call comes to spread their wings and god saying i give you wings i didn't give wings to the serpent i didn't give wings to the rat i didn't give wings to all the other ones that are crawling on the ground and if you have wings by grace by god's goodness by god's creation and by god's um, by god's power the wings are to be used for something and when he says stretch those wings and look up and fly you'll not say but the rat is not flying he doesn't have wings all those mamas don't know they're not flying they don't have wings but you he gives you forgiveness he gives you freedom he gives you salvation he gives you the very nature of christ and he says you have what they do not have and he gives you the mind to determine and the mind to dedicate yourself and the mind to do what he has called you to do and you have the wings to spread and uh, to fly you will fly yeah. uh, you know yeah you know some people uh, some of our children you go to school then you do a particular exam internal exam and you got 62 percent and uh, so you get back home and you say daddy we did this exam for this week and i got 62 percent and daddy says you how did you score that is 62 percent daddy you know uh, there were other people they also scored 60 even 58 even 53 so me why are you comparing yourself with those who are not eagles what if the eagle will tell the mother eagle uh, he couldn't fly beyond six feet above the ground but you know mommy eagle don't blame me look at the rat he cannot even go one foot and look at that he cannot go even two feet i will not compare myself with them i i i will not compare myself with them he had made you special you remain special he has called you and you have returned unto him and because to return unto him and because you have a special calling a special life no comparison anymore in jesus name you're still sleeping at 10 o'clock when are you going to wake up well <laughs> don't hurry me i know some students too they don't even get to school uh, the headmaster you know before the headmaster gets there they don't get to school before they do this they don't get to school i know some of our students uh, in my own class and already two lessons have gone and they are just walking in leisurely and so if i wake up at 10 o'clock I'll, I'll still meet up i'll still meet up they might have done two or three classes or lessons but i'll be there why are you comparing yourself with other people i'm not so bad the people who are worse than myself why are you comparing yourself with other people yes i know i'm slow yes i know i'm sluggish yes i know that my life my character is not exactly what it ought to be as i read it by but i'm not the only one i will not compare myself to the people that don't have weeks to fly i will fly <laughs> you know somebody uh, said ah, uh, pastor at your age we hear that you go there you go there and you say you know uh, pastor so and so doesn't he doesn't do that he takes life easy that's pastor so and so i am not so and so you how about you i said how about you 
They are so and so, but you are special and you are significant. And that specialty, the Lord will affirm in your life, in Jesus' name, break up from the ones and the people that do not have wings you are an eagle and it says now therefore if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above 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 all the people for all the earth is mine. Look at Isaiah chapter 55. Isaiah chapter 55 and I'm reading from verse 6. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. And this is your chance. This is your opportunity that today the strength you didn't have before you came here you seek the Lord while he may be found. And the aspiration the inspiration, the go-getting energy and nature you didn't have before you got here. Seek the Lord you will have. Amen. And you know, the vision, the vision of the eagle that you didn't have. You know, I, I go to school. What are you going to become when you come out of school? Well, probably a uh, work. And I hear that there are people that have come out of, out of school and they don't have work and they do just to make, you know, ends meet. They drive taxi, they do farming at the back of their, of their, of their yard and they do this and I ah, get something done. Me, I not just get something done, I get something significant doing. Something that will influence my city influence my country influence my continent influence my world you are caught out for something special in jesus name but you know you have to seek the lord while he may be found you have to call upon him while he is near he's so very near now you know, when you're alone at home, yes, we can pray at home. We can seek the Lord at home. We can claim the promises of God at home. But you know, when you come together like this, you have thousands of people around you, and they are bombarding heaven, and they are praying to heaven, and they are saying, Oh Lord, change my nature, change my life, change everything within me. That one is crying, that one is shouting, that one is, uh, you know, rejoicing, and the volume of prayer is going up that's the best time he's very near he's saving that one he's forgiving that one he's sanctifying that one he's empowering that one he's giving vision to that one that one is even hearing the audible voice of god and activity spiritual activity anointing activity going on that's the best time to pray and when the time comes to pray you'll not be here and there you will be an eagle See Seek ye the Lord while he may be found, and call ye upon him while he is near. Look at verse 7 there. It says, let the wicked forsake his way. Now, the wicked forsake his way. If you had told me that before 1964, I got converted, I would have said me. What am I to forsake? I don't smoke. I wasn't smoking. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't doing uh, what they call womanizing. Nothing. Nothing like that. And so, if you had told me, let the wicked forsake his way, I would say, what am I going to forsake? But now I understand. The laziness that was my way. And the absence from school. I told you my story before. 1951, 
I would always be absent from school. That was my way. I would always go here and go here, roaming about without any purpose in life, without any goal in life. That was my way. I wasn't wicked to other people. I was wicked to myself. I was wicked to my future. I was wicked to my destiny. And then I came to realize, although I don't beat other people, I'm not wicked to other people, I'm wicked to the most significant person in my life. That's myself. And there is my way of roaming about. There is my way of being idle. I forsook my way. And I took the way of the Lord. And today, you will look at your life. What are the things there in your life that saps your energy, that turns you back from a glorious future, that makes you a person that ought to be first class? You are even behind third class. But now, today, you'll forsake your ways. I said you'll forsake your ways. You'll take Christ the way of the Lord. And it will turn your life around. Let the wicked forsake its way. And the unrighteous man his thoughts. What were my thoughts at those times? I will make it. Even though I don't read if the farmer is like the farmer saying, I will reap a bumper harvest even though I don't sow. I will get money even though I don't work. And the Lord that said, in the sweat of your face, you will earn your living. And even though I don't obey the Lord and I don't have any sweating, I'll take the money coming from the people that work and sweat. That is a wrong thought. And he wants you to forget and to forsake your thoughts. The thought of foolishness is sin. You don't sow, you want to reap, is the thought of foolishness. You don't work, you want to earn, is the thought of foolishness. You want to take advantage of the people that are working and sweating and doing everything they ought to do. And you want to have the same promotion, the same honor, the thought of foolishness. Let the wicked forsake his way. And the righteous man is thought, and let him return unto the Lord, and he will have mercy upon him. I see children of mercy here today. I see candidates for mercy here today. Mercy will come to you. All the consequence of the past failure, the Lord will wipe everything away. And you will have mercy upon him and let him return to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. He will pardon you. He will turn your life around. He will take darkness out of your life and your life will shine. And that kind of, you know, here and there kind of life, no determination, no discipline, no devotion, no dedication, no decision for the best of life. Uh, take all that emptiness away from your life, you'll have uh, determination. Amen. You know, that's what the Lord did for me. I, I was like, you know, an empty person, no vision, no goal, no determination. And what I see other people doing, if they rise up to go and play, I, you know, I, I was afraid to be alone by myself. And yet I came to this world alone. And I'm going when I leave, I'm going alone. But I couldn't stay alone, determined to do what I'm called to do in life. And then the Lord Emmanuel changed my life. And now I could stay by myself. I could study for hours by myself. Until today, till today, I still study for hours. 
hours every day because now alone i know i can soar and because now from today you will soar in jesus name gracious emmanuel will have mercy on you and he'll put that thing in your spirit, in your soul, in your mind That what you have come on earth to do As an eagle, you will concentrate on it And nobody will shift you yeah. And he used to call me names, you know If you cannot bear the names they call you uh, they just will distract your attention. They'll mention my name and they say, Bookworm, Bookworm. What did I care? But that's what they said. And if I'm really Bookworm, I will, you know, I will eat everything inside that chapter and inside that book. And I did it. And I did it. You will do it in Jesus' name. <laughs> Even when I became, as I became Christian, other Christians, uh, you know, around me, they did quite a lot of things, not sinful things. It's a Christian does not commit sin, but uh, they, they just were there. But you know, while I'm in the midst of them, I'm either, I'm either reading Pilgrim's Progress by John Boyan, or I'm reading a book of John Wesley, or I'm reading another thing, and they come to me and they tease me. Are you going to be reading every minute of the day? I said, I understand you, your own nature, your own life. Go ahead with your own and leave me to go my own way. That is the way of the Lord. That's what brought me to where I am today. And I invite you, come, come, come. Join with me. I said join with me. Let your life have concentration, consecration. And addict yourself to the calling, to the profession, to the ministry the Lord has called you to. Remember, you saw you are separate. You saw you are observant. You saw you are active. You saw and you are responsive. Let's come to point number two. Point number two, I'm looking at present renewal of life through the great Emmanuel. Present renewal of life through the great Emmanuel. Psalm 103. I'm reading from verse 3. Psalm 103, verse 3. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. The eagle, I mean the human eagle, I mean you. We need that. If there is, uh, you know, clutter of sin, if there is pressure of sin, if there is condemnation, if there is guilt because of what you did last night, if there is conflict and unsettlement in your heart because of the sin of the past, eh, there's no way you can be a flying, soaring eagle in that condition. Guilt weighs us down. Condemnation weighs us down. Other people may not know, but you know it will wear down, it will keep down your soul. And your conscience is so troubled, you cannot concentrate. But you want to be a soaring eagle. And you want to commit your life to the Lord so that nothing on earth, nothing from hell will keep you down. You need forgiveness. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases, all thy diseases. Now disease, if you look at that word disease, you break into two. This is the ease in your life. The ease in your soul, the ease in your mind, there's something that disturbs that. 
There's something that takes you away from that ease and peace. Sometimes it's the disease of the mind. Sometimes it's the disease of the body. Sometimes it's the disease of your soul. And he comes to heal you. We need that healing. We need that healing. Not just the physical healing disease in the body. And that's why it said Jesus came to heal the broken hearted. Broken hearted. That's in Luke. Don't, don't read it now. Just, just uh, note it down. That's in Luke chapter 4 verse 18. That he heals us from broken heartedness. When the heart is broken the future is broken when the heart is broken the destiny is broken when the heart is broken your vision is broken and yet christ has come the great emmanuel has come so that the disease of the body and the disease of the heart and the disease of the soul and the disease of the brain he heals he will heal you today I said he'll heal you today. <laughs> you know, when you come, when you get out of here, and you are over there. When I'm not preaching, you'll be shouting. Now I want a shout of amen and just amen. He forgives all that iniquities and he healeth all that diseases. Look at verse 4. In verse 4, he redeems your life from destruction. Your life from destruction. Your life from destruction. I didn't know. I couldn't tell that all those boys in our own school, when I was there, that will introduce Juju traditional scene, and they will say, William. You don't need to read. You know what? We can give you this, and without reading that charm. That charcoal, that lizard, cockroach, they burn and put some things together there and they pour something. They say, eat this. And the mathematics will jump from the book and jump into your head. It's not true. I said it's not true. When the charcoal was there, before they mix it up, Charcoal did not know mathematics. When the lizard was there still alive and crawling about, the lizard did not know mathematics. And when the cockroach was there, and the cockroach was still alive in the night, running away from the light, the cockroach did not know mathematics. Now, when the charcoal and the, when the cockroach and when the lizard, when they are now dead and burnt, what they didn't know when they are alive, can they know it now? And what they didn't know, can they give that to you? No. But you know, when your life is renewed and you now understand it, you are redeemed from all that lie. You are redeemed from all that deception. You are redeemed from all the lies of the devil. Then he says, Who crowneth thy youth? Who crowneth thee with loving kindness and tender mercies? You have the mercy of God. You have the kindness of the Lord. All all those foolish things you abandon and your life will shine forth as the life of the eagle look at verse 5 in verse 5 who satisfies thy mouth with good things my mouth with good things my mouth with good things when others are eating the gravel of the outcome of the useless life you will not have to eat grind gravel in your mouth. Good things, good supply, good provision. You will have enough and to give to other people. And, and you know, and you know, if you are not married yet, good ladies are looking for good men. But if we are rascals, if we're here and there, if we're bad, but want good wives, uh-uh. I heard 
of a man that told a lady because they were familiar I want to marry you and that one said I'm sorry although we're familiar I can't marry a struggling man struggling with life he's not stable he cannot feed himself he cannot fend for himself me marry you uh -huh. familiarity does not blindfold me familiarity does not make me blind go and find another woman me i'm looking for a good man i don't know about you i said i don't know about you We've been together from the children's church. Yes, I know. We've been together in the youth fellowship. Yes, I know. That's one. That's just familiarity. Your life will be good. Good people will be looking for you. And good people will see the will of God unto you in Jesus' name. He renews your life like that of the eagle. That, that's what he does. And that's how good things come into our lives. Good things will come to your life. Present renewal. That's why we're here. You know, sometimes someone come for a youth program like this. After, you know, the pastor has finished preaching, uh, then the young people, not like you, but other young people, they start, you know, roaming about, shouting and all that. What will the good thing get into you? After the message today, you will pray and that God will transform your life. It'll make you eagle. Real, real eagle. Hey, look at Isaiah chapter 40, and I'm reading from verse 28. Isaiah chapter 40, we're looking at verse 28. It says, As thou not known, as thou not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of his understanding. Look at verse 29. In verse 29, he giveth power to the faint. That's why you are here today. He will give power to your fainting heart in Jesus' name. He giveth, but you have to come. He giveth, but you have to ask. He giveth, but you have to pray. He giveth power to the faint and to them that have no might he increases strength it will increase your strength it'll increase your might it'll increase your vision it will increase all that you need that will make you a soaring eagle today in jesus name for the people that wait for him for the people that wait on him he renews them he empowers them he increases them look at verse 30 in verse 30 it says even the youths shall faint look at that the youths who depend on their own pranks when the time comes to soar they'll faint the youths that depend on i'm just a young fellow and young fellows have their time to sow the wild oats and they do not have the time to wait upon the lord and to rely upon the lord those years when the time comes we need the strength the strength to do what we are created to do they will faint and be weary it says and the young men shall utterly fall 
no prayer you'll utterly fall and there is no preparation for days ahead they will utterly fall there is no determination to carry out what the lord is calling them to have at this time they will faint and fall when the time comes there's no time to develop the wings and then uh, to exercise the wings the lord had given them and the opportunity the lord had given them when the time comes to fly and soar above how can they the wings have not been trained to fly the wings have not been exercised to fly they will fade and they will fall but look at verse 31 in verse 31 but they that wait upon the lord the young people that wait upon the lord the youths that wait upon the lord the people that know i'm created to be an eagle i'm created to soar i'm created to be empowered i'm created to be a man and a woman of purpose and i need heavenly power to do that and they wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength a better amen, amen. Renew, renewing of the strength takes some effort takes taking what the Lord has provided. It takes asking and seeking and knocking. It takes praying unto the Lord. They that wait upon the Lord. Uh, you know, sometimes I meet people and I offer them something and I say, Pastor, I'm sorry, no. I am waiting upon the Lord. And I've been wondering, what does that mean? Waiting upon the Lord? It means I set apart this time so that I can elevate prayer so that I can exercise prayer and other things that are necessary like food like water like just friendship interaction I put that aside. They are not sinful relationship. I put that aside now. I'm waiting on the Lord. I'm asking for something higher, greater, mightier than all these important things that I need and take every day. And you know, until you're able to push aside for some time, regular things that you normally do, regular things that you normally take, regular things that you normally have, and you see at this time, the strength of the eagle the vision of the eagle the power of the eagle and the drive of the eagle that i need is more important to me i even need to research my life and i've been here and there i've been up and down that i don't even know now why i'm here on earth i need to research my life and research my goal wait upon the lord they that wait upon the lord shall renew their strength they shall mount up with wings as eagles you shout another amen there they will mount up with wings if they allow anything to clip their wings to cut their wings if they allow any friend to cut their wings if they allow all these acquaintances to cut their wings the wings of aspiration the wings of ambition the wings of determination the wings of dedication if they allow anything to cut their wings their life is gone they cannot mount up but you know you have to keep those wings the promises of god the provision of god the wings that will help you to soar keep those wings so that when the lord now gives you the strength you'll mount up with the wings of an eagle and they shall run and not be weary <laughs> they shall run 
and not be weary running the race that is set before us running the race that god has marked out for our lives you see there are people that run i was in that program i was in that program now i am weary now i am tired running 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 no you will renew your strength you will renew your power Renew your focus and the vision you are. Vision, very important. It renews the vision. I, I can tell now, more than 50 years ago, I had a vision. And I still recall the vision when I'm by myself and when, even when I'm preaching, I recall the vision. I, I could see, I could see the congregation. That time, I didn't have one single convert i was teaching but i saw the vision i even can see the clothes i was wearing at that time more than 50 years ago more than 55 years ago and i could see and that vision the vision of the eagle gets renewed and renewed and renewed every day the lord will do it for you but you know the people that have vision a year past years and they will say good were the good old days when I used to have ambition, ambition aspiration, dedication but now I don't know what happened, I can tell you what happened, you are not waiting upon the Lord and so your strength, your passion your vision, your mission is not being renewed but it says they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, they shall mount up with wings as eagles they will run we shall run we shall run and not be weary they shall walk we shall walk and not faint not faint not faint uh, have you been on you know on the field where runners were and many people are uh, spectators at the stadium and then we'll say get ready search go and then they all began to run i can picture it in my you know in my mind now as i see them and one before them reaching the middle of the way he fades kneels down lies down and the referee comes and he says oh he said i cannot continue my heart is not strong enough to make me continue there are people like that in life they start running they start achieving they start studying they start working they start doing something and before they get to the middle of the road to get them to the final destination they lose strength they lose vitality and they lose the power they ought to have to get to the final end today the lord will renew your strength and all that is making you to just lie down there, I cannot, you will. You change, I cannot, to I can. You have not changed. You change, I will not, to I will. You change, I must not. You know, my friends are looking at me and they're saying, uh-huh, keep on running ahead of everybody, keep on walking ahead of everybody, and keep on studying ahead of everybody, and keep on focusing on goals beyond everybody. Okay, go. <laughs> yes, I will go. I said I will go. I can. I will. I must whatever others do whatever others do not do he calls you he calls me to wait on him and then he says renew your strength he says you'll mount up with wings as eagles he says you will run and you'll not be weary you will walk and you will not faint Amen. Amen.
renewal in your life in Jesus name I come to point number three now point number three progressive resilience under the leadership of the guiding Emmanuel guiding Emmanuel he will guide you he will lift you up he'll say this is the way walk ye therein when I finished um, you know school certificate it was good but my father called me a good man a great man good great by the standard of everybody around us around him he said I've done everything I will do for education and I didn't have any other contact I didn't have any other person and this school set is only O level and I need to go to for A level and no money to send me to uh, what we call higher school certificate HSC and so I said okay what do I do now progress I will make progress I will make progress resilience that I look at life and I say the poverty of my parents and I say the utterance of my people will not stop me I am moving on I'm looking for somebody there I am moving on God will take what he gave me at that time he'll put it in your heart and so I had to look for work. I was working and I was teaching. And we will finish this, the, you know, with the students because we'll do even the prep and all that that will lead them to the next day until nine o'clock. And then from that 9 p.m., I'll take my math books, pure math, applied math, and all the other subjects. That the time, 9 o'clock, sometimes 9.30, I'll start studying. Until 12, 12.31, I'm still there. I'm still studying. I didn't say, Daddy said, no money to send you for any higher education. No, not what he has said. That's a daddy higher than the athlete daddy. That's a father higher than the earthly father. And he communicated with me. And I studied and studied and studied. And I went for the exam. I didn't go to, you know, HSC. But I had A1 in pure math, A3 in applied math. And I didn't say I cannot because you can. I said you can. Here is a level certificate for the next level university. And if daddy did not have money to send me to for you know, HSC, who am I going to get the resources now to go to university? All the same I applied. You know, if you're running and running and running and you stop, you get tired but if you keep on running and keep on running you'll be picking up strength never stop I will not stop so I applied and I got admission to the University of Ibadan and for sponsorship I didn't know how to you know all these uh, at that time there wasn't any internet Google search and all that where I could search for this and search for this and search for that but the principal of my school I just uh, went to him uh, to break the news that I've got admission oh you said uh, Mr. Komoi this is good we're proud of you and before he finished his sentence I said will the school sponsor me no application, just a question. Will the school sponsor me? He said, Yes. They will always say yes to you. The eagle of the day, the eagle of our time. Yes, from the right. Yes, from the left. Yes, upon your life. In Jesus' name. That's how I got to the university. One line. 
and they wanted me to read mass mass economics and i didn't do economics at my a level so i got to the you know person registering us preparing us for matriculation he looked at my subject he looked at the result he told all the student waiting behind me he said hold on i need to do some he got up he didn't even tell me what he was going to do and then he got to that other department he said they registered this a young man remove economics and put physics that economics does not go on with mass mass and they put me mass mass physics i didn't even ask for that what you didn't ask for the lord will give you it's made you an eagle it's prepared you an eagle you will reach there and i got to the class mass mass physics and then uh, we had some people in uh, our class, I can't remember the name now, older than myself. And he couldn't understand all this uh, mass and everything. And when the lecturer finishes, he will come to me and say, can you help me? I never say no. Can you teach me? I never say no. Never say no to opportunities. I will say yes. And then I will teach him. Eventually, as we came, remember, daddy said, no money to sponsor you. Even to A level, not to talk of university, but God sponsored me. I said, God sponsored me. He will sponsor you. And even with all the sponsors people can give you, God will sponsor you above that all well to cut a long story short sometimes we'll make a short story long but today i'll make the long story make it short and when we finished my you know um, graduate exam everything you know, and now became the first in the whole university at that year and the Lord himself gave me the first class. Not just first class, there were three of us that were first class that year. But I was on top of them all. And you will be on top of them all in Jesus' name. But you know, progress takes, progress takes, progress takes perseverance takes resilience that you will not give up and you say i'm moving on i'm moving on you will move on i said you'll move on give me your hand where are you i hold your hand i said this is the way god helped me to do it and i pull you up and i pull you on and I strengthen you. And whenever you are saying, I cannot bear it anymore, I said, I'm still here. Come to another meeting and I inject you again afresh. You're moving on in Jesus' name. Progressive resilience under the leadership of a guiding Emmanuel. Deuteronomy chapter 32. I'm reading here from verse 11. As an eagle stirreth up her nest and fluttereth over her young spreadeth abroad her wings and taketh them, beareth them on her wings. That's how the Lord will take you. That's how the Lord will bear you. Look at the next verse in verse 12. It says in verse 12, So the Lord alone, 
the Lord alone. When you don't have any man, when you don't have any any helper, when you don't have any sponsor, when you don't have any other hand that will bear you up, so the Lord alone did lead him, lead her, lead them, and there was no strange God with him. He will guide you. He'll give you that vision. He'll give you that strength. He'll give you that anointing. He'll give you that provision. He'll give you that power. You will soar in Jesus' name. By yeah. looking at Psalm 61, and I'm reading from verse 2. Psalm 61, verse 2. From the end of the earth, will I cry unto thee. We need to pray. We need to ask him. If there's sin weighing us down, we need to ask so he will forgive us he will cleanse us he will save us if there is a, if there's disease that is holding us back we need to cry to him and pray to him and he'll take sickness away from you in jesus name if there is poverty holding us back he'll remove the poverty he'll bring provision in your life in jesus name if there's bad habit and the thought of foolishness weighing us down He'll take the bad habit. He'll take all those thoughts of foolishness. He'll take everything away from us in Jesus' name. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth. From the end of the earth. You know where I was? I, I'm not sure whether it's even the map now. When you draw the, you know, the map of the world. End of the earth. Where my family was. End of the earth. Where I found myself in my young uh, teenage years. From the ends of the earth. Wherever you are, you are not known. The Lord will bring you to the land life from the ends of the earth where you were not known where nobody was thinking of you from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is overwhelmed when my heart is overwhelmed overwhelmed with everything I see around everything I hear around everything that kind of distorts my life around when my heart is overwhelmed and it appears I cannot take another step uh -uh. progressive resilience when your heart is overwhelmed when the situations around when they overwhelm you it says I lead me to the rock that is higher than I, higher than my natural strength, higher than my natural expectation, higher than the attainment and the achievement of my family up to this time. And then you'll be the number one in your family. Yeah. To go where the rest of the family had never gone you'll be the one number one in your community where the community people around you where they have not gone others might remain like rats like reptiles like mammals on the ground now god will give you the wings to soar the wings to rise. And as you look around, you are going up and up and up. And when you get high enough, the things on the ground, they become so small and insignificant. The higher we go, the higher we climb, the higher we fly, the smaller the things on earth they come. If you be in an aeroplane and you look through the window, you see the things that are big, the houses, the cars, the roads, the objects that were big. As you climb up and up and up, they are almost getting out of sight. The things that are so major in your heart, so pronounced in your heart, when God gives you the vision of the eagle, the wings of the eagle, the strength of the eagle, the progress of the eagle, all those other things on ground, 
that were big before and they overwhelmed you. They'll become so small, they don't have effect on your life anymore. I invite you to now to come climb, to come soar, and to come become special, become significant. I invite you now to become obedient to the voice that calls from heaven. I call you now to come and have this achievement to achieve what you have never achieved. I call you to now have the resilience you ought to have. Thank God you will. Thank God things will be different from today. Abandon the past. Look up into the future. Something greater you, than you ever imagined in your life is coming to you right now. And the Lord will guide you to the height, to the peak, to the highest level. You'll fulfill the reason for your creation on earth in Jesus' name. Connection between the eagle and Emmanuel. Make the connection now. Let's rise up and say, Lord, here I am. Connection. Connection with Emmanuel. That connection brings conversion. That connection brings consecration. That connection brings concentration. That connection brings cooperation. And at last, it will bring coronation. Open your mouth and pray unto the Lord. What are the things in your life the Lord wants you to repent of? What are the things in your life the Lord is saying? Return. Let the wicked forsake their way. What are those simple things there? The Lord is saying, forsake. Get rid of. Remove. So that you give you the strength and the wings of the eagle and your world soar. What are the thoughts of foolishness? The life of foolishness that wastes your energy being like other people, dancing around like other people, mingling with other people. Let the eagle in you separate you from all those other colleagues and acquaintances that drag you down and sap your upgoing energy. Repent. Return unto the Lord. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call ye upon him. While it's near, let the wicked forsake his way and the righteous man his thoughts. Let him return, return, return unto the Lord with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. And say, Lord, I return. Don't wait for other people. Let that connection come between the eagle and Emmanuel. And say, Lord, today. This day is the day when I make the connection with Emmanuel, God, with us. This is the day I abandon the past, the wastefulness of the past. And I come in this new relationship with Emmanuel. My Savior and my Lord, tell him, He forgiveth all the iniquities we repent of. He sets us free 
from all the cords that bind us to the earth snaps them cuts them removes them now you are free to soar you separate from sin and sinfulness you observe what he has called you to do return repent and say lord i accept that i believe that i'll do that you are active you're not just passive there will not do whatever you will do no you are active active responsive and you respond to the call of god upon your life who forgiveth all thine iniquities who healeth all thy diseases it repairs the broken body it restores renews the broken heart disease in your soul in your mind in your body he removes everything now he renews your youth like that of the eagle new strength new determination new dedication new consecration and a new power in your life That's what he does. That's what he's doing now. Cry unto him. Wait on the Lord. Seek his face. When others fail and fall, you'll keep walking, you'll keep running, you'll keep soaring. Emmanuel with you. Believe. Emmanuel in you. Believe. Emmanuel for you. Believe. Emmanuel will walk through you. With you. For you. In you. And through you. Emmanuel. The God of all power, the God of all provision, the God of your possession. Believe. He has promised he cannot fail. Believe. He works and no man will let him hinder him, stop him, believe, and mark this day, the day you voluntarily, completely handed over your life unto the Lord, believe it's done. In Jesus' name, we pray. In Jesus' name, we pray. Emmanuel has connected with you, the eagle. There's no limit now where you'll get to. In the kingdom of God, no limit. 
the society in this world no limit in your christian life no limit in your professional life no limit emmanuel will be with you and go with you and walk with you all the way through in jesus name Amen in your life. Amen. Raise up that hand, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We thank you. We love you. We appreciate you. We glorify you. We honor you for what you have done and what you are doing right now. Lord, I pray for everyone who has separated from sin, repented of sin, and they come wanting this converting connection with Emmanuel. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Save them and set them free. And our Lord, any sickness, any infirmity, any disease in the mind, in the heart, in the spirit, in the soul, in the body, Lord, take every disease away in Jesus' name. Heal the broken heart. Heal the diseased body. Heal the mentally deranged brain. Heal every if everyone in any area that needs a healing touch now in Jesus' name. And Lord, the vision of an ego, give to everyone without exception. The strength of an ego. Give to everyone in Jesus' name. The aspiration, the ambition, and the focus of an eagle. Give everyone in Jesus' name. The achievement of an eagle, the inspiration of an eagle, pass on to every heart. And Lord, as we return, as we are renewed, we become resilient. That nothing will stop anyone here. Yeah. You will make progress. Yeah. You will achieve. Yeah. And everything the Lord has ordained in your life from all eternity, you will fulfill in Jesus' name. Yeah. You will run, you will not faint. Yeah. You will walk, you will not be weary. Yeah. You will soar, you will not backslide. You will achieve, and you will not be downtrodden. And every challenge, every difficulty in your way, it is removed in Jesus' name. Strength in your life. Power in your life. Provision in your life. Ambition in your heart. Achievement in your life. As you shine in the world, you will shine in the church. Your character, your comportment, your conduct, your career, you'll be up and up and up continually. The Lord is taking you to the top. We will see you there. As we celebrate Emmanuel, we'll celebrate the eagles in front of me, online, everywhere, in Jesus' name. And what we have heard of other young people, other young adults, and they came to know you, and what had been proclaimed and prophesied, that many, many, many of us here in the places we go, school, college, university, college of medicine, hospital, government, everywhere we go, many of us, a large percentage, you will be there. And the Lord, if he tarries, 
It'll give me long, long life. Just to see that that soaring has been fulfilled in you. Lord, confirm it for everyone. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Help me shout, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. I got it. I got it. Say it well. I got it. I'll see you on the top in Jesus' name.